Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is a Jack Frost Ligustrum. This is Jack Frost Ligustrum, a beautiful variegated evergreen shrub that's mostly used as a screening plant. Jack Frost can eventually reach 10 to 12 feet in height and probably four to seven or eight feet in width. You could keep it probably narrower if you needed to. Jack Frost Ligustrum is best in zones seven to 10. In zone seven, this plant in a very cold winter would probably take a little bit of tip burn damage. You know, maybe the top three or four inches could be damaged. I almost consider it a free pruning. It's really not gonna be that big of a deal. We grow these in zone seven in central North Carolina above ground in a container. I don't even offer them much protection in the winter and certainly they're more vulnerable above ground in a container than they are in the ground and we rarely get any damage on these. In terms of the growth rate of Jack Frost Ligustrum, the green foliage varieties of Ligustrum are much faster growing than the variegated ones, but that doesn't mean this plant's slow. It might add six inches, maybe eight inches in a single season. I don't consider that slow growth, but it is slow compared to Ligustrum recurvifolium or Ligustrum Davidson hardy, those can grow two and three feet in a single season once they're established. Jack Frost would prefer to be in a half a day sun or more, you know, all the way to full sun. It will take quite a bit of shade. Ligustrum will grow fantastic in the shade, but they tend to end up thin, especially near the base of the plant. And of course, if you end up with a 12 foot tall plant that is naked from six feet down and you're five foot 11, you're gonna see right through the bottom of it. So it's not gonna be a very good screening plant in shady conditions. In terms of usage of Jack Frost Ligustrum, obviously this foliage has just a beautiful two-tone contrast to it. It looks great with other dark green evergreen shrubs. And so I would use this in a mixed screen. I would maybe put three of something in and then one of these just for a splash of color. This plant is gonna grow a little slower than whatever you put it near that's a screening plant in all likelihood. So I, you might consider buying these in a slightly larger container and the other thing in a slightly smaller container and that might keep the growth about even over time. The other place it could be used is on the corner of a foundation and it can actually be limbed up and tree formed like other Ligustrum varieties. If you had a, because of its rate of growth, if you had high windows, maybe five or six feet on one end of your house, you might get away with using this as a foundation plant as well. It's not, it will outgrow the height, but it grows so slowly that I think it'd be easy to control. You might have to prune it every other year, maybe take a foot off of it. Jack Frost Ligustrum produces a slightly fragrant cluster of white flowers in the mid spring. They're really not very noticeable because the variegation on this plant is so bright that white just really doesn't show up against it. And it's really not grown for a flower. It's just grown for this beautiful variegated foliage. In terms of planting, Ligustrum, really anything in the Ligustrum family, Chinese privets, Japanese privets, it doesn't really matter. Not a lot to worry about. You could probably take these out of the pots and plant them upside down and it'd figure out some way to survive it. But because we're gonna use this as a screening plant, we're gonna try to get some growth out of it. I probably would put some time into planting it and amend the soil. And if you have heavy clay soils, I would use pine bark soil conditioner. It's what we're growing these in. When you pull the clay out of the hole, uh, dig the hole the depth of the container and then slightly wider, whatever comes out of that hole, mix that soil, existing soil 50-50 with pine bark soil conditioner in the clay. If you have a sandier soil, whatever comes out of the hole, mix that 50-50 with compost or cow manure or peat moss, anything that will help you hold some water in place. Take some of that 50-50 mix and put it back in the bottom of the hole about two inches deep so that when you pull your plant out of the container and set it into the ground, your plant actually sits up above the grade some. Then take your soil mix, pull it up to the edge, tamp it down tight so you get rid of any air pockets that are in the soil, water it in well, and then lightly mulch it. And don't cover anything that's not covered when you purchase the plant. Do not bury this plant in mulch. It will definitely slow the growth and create all kinds of problems for any plants, really. Another consideration you're almost certainly gonna have when planting these is almost all Ligustrum are gonna be root bound, meaning the roots are gonna be very matted in a circle around the container. And you can see this one is. What we wanna do in that situation 
is after we pull it out of the container, we'll want to pull at those roots and get them to stop circling around one another. If it doesn't work pulling at them, if they're really too tight, you can actually take a knife and cut from top to bottom, maybe a half inch in, maybe three times around the container, and that'll get the roots starting to go out rather than wrapping around one another. All Ligustrum are extremely drought tolerant. They're really not gonna need any additional water from you once they're established. But with this plant, we're trying to create a screen possibly between us and the neighbor. So we wanna keep this thing growing all summer for the first few years until we, it reaches the height we're trying to get it to. So if it, if it becomes abnormally dry during the summer, it's gonna stop growing. So those first couple seasons, I'm probably gonna water this thing during dry times. And I'm gonna drag a water hose over to it or maybe you put in a drip hose in your screening, along your screening plants, hook your water hose up to it. But I'm gonna saturate the whole area around this plant very thoroughly, okay? And then let it become dry again between rains. Not crazy dry, but let it drain away and you can come back and stick your finger at the base of the plant and see how dry it is. And then when you water, water, water the same way again, drown the space and then come back, wait, let it dry out, come back and do it again. The reason we do that drowning of the space and not watering right at the base of the plant is because we want the thing to go out searching the surrounding soil for water. And it does that by pushing roots out into the surrounding soils. The more faster this thing gets rooted into the ground, the faster it's gonna grow and the less you're gonna have to water it in the future. Ligustrum are acid loving plants. Any slow release fertilizer for acid loving plants, uh, Zellia camellia rhododendron fertilizer would work great. Holly tone would work great on these, which would be an organic option. I would do it in the spring and then I'd do it again in the early summer while you're trying to establish your screen. And then once you've got them up to the height you want them, I would just every spring give them a little bit of that fertilizer. The best color on this plant is in the newest growth. The older growth is much more dark green, less of the variegation in it and more of the variegation out on the tips. So that summer growth is more appealing and fertilizer will help with that. In terms of pruning Jack Frost Ligustrum or any Ligustrum, it can be pruned whenever you want to really or whenever you have time to. I probably wouldn't do a lot of pruning on it in the late fall or early winter because it wouldn't grow back and it just looked like that all winter or whatever you made it look like at that time. But in the spring, mid spring, early summer, you could cut this as hard as you need to. You can shear along the edges to control the width of it, take off the top. You could probably cut this plant pretty much to the ground and it would just regenerate and come back. They're that hardy. We may see a little leaf spotting on Jack Frost. It actually seems to be a little worse on Jack Frost than on the green varieties. I'm not that worried about it at all. It'll shed a few leaves if it stays wet for a prolonged period of time. It's not that big of a deal. Rarely, rarely did anything chew on Ligustrum. If they're in stress, I will see scale insects near the base of pretty much all Ligustrum, right along the base where it goes into the ground. Usually those are on, only on stressed plants, plants that are dry, plants that are grown in somebody's lawn, just not taken care of, maybe in too much shade. That's where I'm gonna see that. Deer typically stay away from the broadleaf Ligustrum. They'll eat the Chinese privet, the small privet, like variegated privet or the green privets, just right to the ground, but tend to stay away from these broadleaf varieties. So what are you waiting for? Even you can grow the beautiful variegated screening plant, Jack Frost Ligustrum. Thank you for watching. And if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any questions you might have about Jack Frost Ligustrum or any other screening plant that you might be interested in. Thanks again.